This video was possible thanks to my partner Raytheon. Laser weapons are about to change war forever, and I want to show you how. I think there are three main reasons the world is in this laser weapons arms race right now. First, to combat the immediate problem of the rise of small, inexpensive drone warfare. Second, to destroy incoming crews and hypersonic missiles. And third, to blind the enemy's satellites that control their navigation and command abilities. The new weapons being built to disable or destroy threats thousands of miles above us, and the crippling consequences for a nation reliant on space. The Kremlin announced the deployment of special laser weapons in May 2023. It's called the Parasevet, which is a ground-based anti-satellite laser. Open source numbers reveal Russia currently has six operational right now. The Parasivet is designed to interrupt or destroy reconnaissance satellites from the ground with an alleged range of 1,500 kilometers or 930 miles. Now it accomplishes this by dazzling the sensitive lenses and electronic equipment with a high-powered beam. This is different from the thermal combustion method that anti-drone and missile lasers use, requiring a less energy-dense beam and thus allowing for a much longer effective range. So if Russia is telling the truth about their laser their capabilities, which is a big if, it would put the range of satellites in low Earth orbit within the kill zone of the Parasivit. This includes Starlink and constellations of satellites essential for Ukrainian and the US command and control that operate at an altitude of around only 550 kilometers, according to their website. According to Space Force officials, China and Russia already have directed energy capabilities that are designed to damage or destroy our satellites. So as a result of this, what we see is the French government is investing approximately $5 billion into acquiring laser weapons as part of their modernization efforts. The US military is investing $1 billion a year into directed energy weapons. Weapons like the Parasivit are actually remnants of legacy laser weapons that focus on long range strategic targets like satellites. Developing lasers for the purpose of hitting large, far away targets is a concept that actually goes all the way back to the Cold War. Laser weapons research began in the 1960s as a kind of moonshot, a reach goal that people actually originally mocked. The United States looked to directed energy weapons in order to target and destroy nuclear armed intercontinental ballistic missiles. If you had the ability to destroy all the enemy's incoming nukes with lasers, you would have a major advantage. President Ronald Reagan named the program after Star Wars, the movie which premiered in 1977. By 1986, missile defense technology had an annual budget of $3 billion. Unfortunately, however, the program to laze the nukes was ultimately abandoned due to complications in trajectory, scale, and maintaining beam integrity over long distances. We look at what's going on today with the Space Development Agency and the Missile Defense Agency, they're actually embracing for the space layer key ideas that were being raised in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. This original idea of defending the homeland against nukes with laser technology was by far the most difficult mission set that you could imagine for the weapon. But this program created a lot of the fundamentals and basics. It laid the groundwork for the practical laser weapons of today. While the US struggled with the tech, the Soviet Union began its own secret space laser program, known only to researchers as SCIF. The satellite-based laser was developed not only for intercontinental ballistic missiles, but primarily was a laser to destroy the constellation of satellite lasers the US was developing in the Star Wars program. The Soviets actually made more progress than the Americans and launched a prototype into space for testing in May 1987. On the ground, the Soviet Union also developed a tank with directed energy weapons that could destroy sensitive electronics on board American helicopters and tanks via laser beam. The 1K11 and 1K17 were fully developed and actually produced in the 1980s. In the air, the Soviets also developed the Durif, a CO2 powered laser that would be carried by modified cargo aircraft to shoot down American reconnaissance balloons. The US had their own version of the airborne laser called the Yao-1, housed in a 747. After millions of dollars in investment, both countries ran into similar roadblocks that plagued laser development at the time, a problem of scale. The YAL-1 and Darif laser components filled the entire cargo space of both these large transport planes, making them impractical for operational use. So if the United States and Russia already spent billions of dollars and decades of research in directed energy development only to fail, 
What is driving laser weapons to completely revolutionize the way we fight wars today? Early in the war, when Kyiv was under attack, a crowd-funded group of 30 Ukrainian IT warriors used motorcycles, commercial off-the-shelf drones, and hand grenades to halt Russia's infamous 40-mile convoy. Since then, hundreds of videos on Twitter and Telegram brought the devastation of these small drones to the forefront of conversation. Footage posted on Twitter in July shows a $4 million Russian T-90 tank destroyed by a Ukrainian FPV drone that retails for under 2,000 bucks. And one of the main, most shocking parts of all this is that there really wasn't any good countermeasures to these cheap drones. Lasers of the Cold War were originally developed to take down these large, long-range nuclear ICBMs. This strategic level responsibility is now being rescaled to answer the tactical level problems of small and fast drones, mortars, and missiles. Directed energy weapons like the High Energy Laser HEL developed by Raytheon are the solution to protecting units against more localized threats, fused with AI targeting and tracking to assist operators in hitting a fast-moving target. High energy laser weapons cook the incoming devices mid-flight. Devices with carbon fiber and plastic components like drones are especially susceptible to these weapons as they're not so resilient to heat. When we talk about anti-air defense, we're really talking about what's referred to as layered air defense. This is a combination of different systems that use different types of projectiles to stop incoming munitions at different ranges and speeds. So for instance, other short-range projectile interceptors like the Phalanx uses a spray and prey method of firing 4,500 rounds per minute at incoming objects. 20 millimeter armor-piercing tungsten penetrator rounds means ammunition here does not come cheap. Highly advanced missile systems like the Patriot missile system are highly capable, but also a cost mismatch to deploy against commercial drones and cheap rockets. For example, you wouldn't use a John Deere tractor to mow your suburban front yard, you use a smaller, cheaper, more precise, easier to move, and easier to maintain push mower. So along the same lines, there's a similar issue of collateral damage. If you use the John Deere tractor on a small yard, it'd be overkill, and there's a good chance you'd mow down your mailbox. And nobody wants that. You want a precise, closer-in weapon like Raytheon's HEL that can steer clear of friendlies and also avoid damaging the whole neighborhood. Sorry about that, Carl. So yes, directed energy weapons are cheaper, but that's not the main takeaway here. A better way of putting it would be that the Phalanx and Patriot are too important to be used on the wrong targets. However, the threat landscape is evolving. Drone swarms, loitering munitions, and even short to medium range artillery and rockets threaten to outpace and undercut these high cost systems. This is where integrating HEL systems fit into this layered air defense strategy. Already, Raytheon has developed 15 kilowatt and 50 kilowatt high energy and high powered microwave lasers. So basically Raytheon's HEL will fit into an existing network of weapon systems. If one layer isn't the right one to identify or destroy a specific threat, then the next layer will. Anti-air defense has always been something of a probability game. Each system gives you a probability to take out an incoming threat. The more layers you have, the better your chances are. We're hearing a lot right now about how AI is gonna change the world soon. But how will AI impact the military world? I think one of the biggest and most immediate effects will be to layered air defense. A computer, for instance, can determine the type of incoming projectile and the correct layer to respond to that projectile in the most cost-effective way, all within milliseconds, something that a human would struggle to do. Innovation in laser and fiber optic technology has reduced the 747-sized chemical lasers down to devices that can comfortably mount on top of a Polaris off-roader. Just look at this comparison between the Soviet 1K-17 laser tank and the US Army's Stryker platoon, armed with the HEL mounted defense system produced by Raytheon. An interview with a laser weapon engineer featured on the war zone at the drive explains how the defense contractors are now able to do this. So in the 1990s, there was a major influx of billions of commercial dollars invested into the commercial industry of fiber optics technology. Then it was used for cutting and welding. The demand for commercial applications is what drove laser technology development. So the military started the technology in the first Cold War, then civilians continued it, and now the military application is taking over once again. According to experts, 
where there was only a 10% efficiency in converting electronic power to laser beams, today engineers are able to reach 30 to 35%. This is why we see not only the US and Russia, but also countries like Germany, India, France, Israel, Iran, and China all showcasing and refining their own directed energy weapons within the last few years. Fortunately for the United States, Public comments from China researchers and PLA officers indicate that China is lagging behind in laser weapons development. Laser weapons showcased in the 2022 air show in China appear to confirm this. Their LW30 30 kilowatt vehicle mounted laser, while it appears to be a mobile system, it's not as agile as you might think. The whole system consists of a fleet of three vehicles, a 30 kilowatt laser weapon vehicle, a command and communications vehicle, and one logistical support vehicle. This is a lot of fuel, maintenance, and a large profile for a single short range laser defense system. However, according to a US Defense Intelligence Agency 2022 report, by the mid to late 2020s, China may field higher power systems that extend the threat to the structures of non-optical satellites. Using directed energy weapons in space-to-space -space combat circumvents a lot of earthbound issues that plague laser effectiveness. Weather, wind, and particles in the atmosphere constantly degrade effectiveness of directed energy weapons by blocking or interrupting the integrity of the light beam. In the vacuum of space, these limitations are non-existent. If you found any information valuable in this video, I hope I earned your like and subscription. Thank you for watching Spare Parts Army. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. If you haven't already seen this video and you want to know more about how laser technology is changing the modern battlefield, then check this video out here. It has my exclusive interview with Raytheon engineers about the type of innovation they're bringing to our service members.